it's often assumed that the Buddha criticized desire of every form. After all, he said the three kinds of craving were the cause of suffering. But those three kinds of craving don't cover every kind of desire. In fact, he says all phenomena, all experience comes, comes from desire. That includes skillful and unskillful qualities in the mind. The only thing that doesn't come from desire is nirvana. That's not based on desire at all. But the path to nirvana is based in desire. Desire is part of right effort, and it's the first of the basis of success. And in many ways it's the most important, because without the desire the other ones don't develop. A Brahmin once came to see Ananda and asked him, this path that you teach, where does it lead? And Ananda said, it leads, in one sense, it leads to the end of desire. And the Brahmin asked him, how do you get to the end of desire? And Ananda listed the four bases of power, the four bases of success, starting with desire. And the Brahmin said, wait a minute. There's no way you can put an end to desire by using desire. And then they said, well, I'll give you an analogy. Before you came to this park, the park where Ananda was staying, didn't you have the desire to come here? And the Brahmin said, yes. And while you were walking here, did you have the desire to keep walking? Yes. And now that you're here, where is that desire? Well, it's gone. Because I'm here, I don't need to desire anymore. And Ananda said, that's the way it is with the practice. To get to the end, you need the desire, but then when you've reached the end, there's no more need for that desire, you can put it aside. The problem with the desire, of course, is that sometimes it can get in the way. If you're focused too much on the causes, excuse me, too much on the results, and not enough on the causes, <clears throat> That kind of desire can get in the way. It's like driving to a mountain on the horizon. If you focus on the mountain all the time, you're going to drive off the road. You never get to the mountain. You run into people, run into things. But if you're convinced this is the road that goes to the mountain, you don't have to look at the mountain, you look at the road. Give all your attention to the road, all your desire to follow the road. And that'll get you there. So as you're meditating, even though you may want to gain nirvana, you may want to gain your jhana, that's why you're here. You don't deny that, but you don't focus on those things. Jhana is not the object of jhana. Your breath is the object. So focus all of your desire on the breath, to get to know the breath. And learn to convince yourself that this is something really important to do, something really interesting, something you want to do. You can think about the benefits that come to the body, the benefits that come to the mind. For the benefits that come to the body, if the breath energy in the body is going well, then there are many diseases that can be cured simply by breathing properly. Or if they're not cured, they can be made lighter. And when dealing with pains in the body, if you have the breath to take as your, as your foundation, then you can be in one spot in the body, and the pains can be in another spot. And then you can use the good energy in your comfortable spot to spread to the pain, and many times that will help lessen the pain. On days when you're tired, you can breathe in ways that give yourself more energy. On days when you're tense, you can breathe in ways that make you more relaxed. So the breath can do a lot of good things for the body. 
As for the mind, it can do even more good things. Simply having an alternative place to stay, aside from your pains, aside from the, the sorrows and ups and downs of daily life, puts the mind in a much better position to deal with those things and not feel threatened by them. For instance, if you're sitting here with a pain that doesn't go away when you breathe through it, at the very least you've got another place to stay in the body. You can stay in the part that you can make comfortable. And then if you want to analyze the pain and understand it, you're coming from a position of strength. When the mind has a sense of comfort inside, then it's not so willing to run along with greed, aversion, and delusion, or fear, any of the things that make it go off course. My teacher had a student, a woman who had cancer. And she had it for 20 years. She'd get cancer in one part of the body, they'd cut that part out, it would spread to another part, they cut that part out. But even though her body was sick like this, her mind seemed to be very stable. I visited her in the hospital one time, the day after she'd had a kidney removed, and she was sitting up in bed looking perfectly normal. Her eyes were bright. And I asked her if there was any pain. She said, yeah, there was pain, but she doesn't go into the pain. She just stayed with the breath stayed with Bhutto. As for her husband, though, her husband didn't meditate, and he was in really bad condition because of her illness. He was constantly worried about her. But she wasn't worried. So having the breath as a friend it would be really good for the mind. Because what it does is gives you a comfortable place to stay, a solid place to stay. if you know how to work with it. And then when other things come up in the mind, you can realize that you're not hungry for them. All too often we're like a person standing by the side of the road. You're hot and tired. Someone comes along in a car says, jump in, let's go. And you jump right in. And you don't ask, who are you, where are you going? We figure that wherever he's going must be better than we already are. And so we jump right in. This is the way we deal with our thoughts. Something comes driving up in the mind, and you just go with it. Sometimes it doesn't even invite you. You just have to you just jump in on your own, thinking that it must be better than where you are. But if you already have a good place for the mind to stay, you can be more selective. You're going to ask, and who are you? Where are you going? Where is this thought going to take me? If you see that it takes you someplace good, then you can go with it and come back safely. If it's going someplace that doesn't look so good, you can say, no thanks, and just let it go. This way you can look into the intentions that arise in the mind and decide which ones are worth going with and which ones are not. This puts you more in control. Instead of your thoughts running your mind, your mind is in charge of your thoughts. And if a thought is insistent, you can just figure out where in the body the thought is associated, because there will be some tension associated with every thought. You can breathe right through it, and the thought goes away. So these are some of the benefits that come for the body, some of the benefits that come for the mind, when you stay with the breath, when you start studying the breath. So give all your attention to the breath. Realize that all the good things you want in your meditation are going to be found right here. Don't have one eye on the breath and another eye someplace else looking for what's going to happen down the line. When are the results going to come? When am I going to see this? When is jhana going to come? You don't need to think those thoughts. Just really get to like the breath. Become friends with the breath. 
pay it some attention. In the same way you'd pay an attention to a friend. If you're trying to make friends with a person, don't make it too obvious that you're using the person. You really want to have some compassion for the friend. Be empathetic with the friend. Be interested in the friend. And then the friend will be happy to help you. So take your desire for happiness, take your desire for freedom from suffering, and focus it here on your breath. If you're going to get there, this is what you've got to get to know first. This is what you've got to empathize with first, You're really with friends with first. That this friend will take you where you want to go. At the same time, you find that your desire to get to know the friend will lead to all the other bases for success. You'll keep coming back, coming back, coming back to the friend, giving full attention to the friend, figuring out what needs to be done to make things better. Those are all the bases of success right there. So they all come from desire. The desire is the part that you have to provide. and that you have to focus in the right place. When you do that, the other qualities will develop in a natural way. <laughs>